Welcome to the Town of Granby uh, Board of Selectmen regular meeting for Monday, September 21st, 2020, as we do with all of our meetings. If you could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the, to the republic which stands for which one nation, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible justice for all. Liberty, justice justice all. for all. Well, we're still not together in that, but <laughs> it sounds good anyway. All right, so as we do with all of our meetings, we'll open public session. Does anyone from the public wish to address the board at this time? If you do, please state your name and address for the record. Looks like Mr. Regan has raised his hand. Go ahead, Bill. Thank you, uh, Bill Regan, 62 Hungary Road. The Board of Selectmen meeting of September 8th was a real eye opener. The board voted four to one to reject the agbotic proposal for property at 107 East Street. That vote was made on the motions. Once again, the board let a proposal get the typical treatment of let's not really do anything substantive that might make the town better. This was the second visionary agricultural pro project mishandled and most likely the last. Granby <coughs> now has a reputation of being in the last century. No cut in the center of town is gone and is not coming back. Get over it. Both Mr. Vaughn and Mr. Preet brought forth projects, although unsolicited, that would have put Granby on the map as a town of deep agricultural roots. Yet the Board of Selectmen is unwilling to embrace new and innovative methods which could have been used as teaching tools for the future. <clears throat> Instead, first selectman clearly emotionally talked about the property as just the last piece of open space in town. Selectman King, Ohansian, and Newman followed the first selectman's lead to reject the agbotic proposal with no real public input. Granby is about 26,000 acres. The town owns about 1,375, and more than 800, er, sorry, 8,000 acres is deeded open space. How much is enough? The 2015 Town Owned Land Study Committee report recommended the use as agricultural. The past two offers were for cutting edge agricultural products that would have reinforced Granby's farming roots. To develop 107 East Street, a public facility would be cost prohibitive, gas and sewer are miles away. It's pie in the sky to think that 107 East Street will become anything other than a financial burden at $170,000 a year for the next 12 years. We did not have the opportunity to vote on the purchase price separately in 2012. It was stuffed into a single bond referendum with multiple other projects. You as our Elected representatives cannot think that you know better than we do. A new vision is necessary to move Granby forward. Otherwise, we are destined to stay in the past. Maybe term limits are the answer. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the board? Hello, I'm on the telephone. Go ahead. Um, Hope Shafrick, Maple Hill Drive. I want a second, third, fourth, and fifth. Mr. Regan was really disappointed with that. I think the town does need to move into the 21st century. Also, a couple of things came to light after these meetings. It seems like the meetings are a little confusing and there's a lot of um, time that's being missed on projects. It seems like we could move a little quicker. Um, we need, I think we need some kind of person or something to track what the issues are and uh, bring them forward and make sure that they are being brought forward. Um, also, I want to say that um, I'm very concerned about the trash and the mirror, and I think the town should be moving towards doing something about this uh, being proactive instead of reactive when Mira closes down. I don't know what our options are, and I would like to hear more of this from the board. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the board? Going once. I would like to, Scott, if I could. Go ahead, Bill. Sure. Um, Bill Glick, 18 Bar Campstead Road in West Granby, Connecticut. So. Um, I would like to just do a quick recap of where we are um, post-COVID. We're nine months into this pandemic that nobody could have anticipated. And I think the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance were reviewing a much different budget prior to COVID. And when COVID happened and the state passed the regs that allowed us to change the way that we do our budgeting, um, the, t 
the town, the board of selectmen gave the board of finance the authority to go ahead and set the budget and it came out at a zero, a zero mill rate increase. And I think that was profoundly important given where we are today looking back, not knowing how long this could have lasted and the fact that it's not over yet. I think the economic <laughs> impact, the economic impact to the businesses in Granby is going to be long lasting as well as to the individuals. And so therefore, as we start thinking about our budget process moving forward, I think it's imperative that we think about doing another zero mill rate increase budget. Um, so I would just uh, congratulate all of you for the work that you did on our behalf. Um, I know it's profoundly impactful to the people that were really affected and lost their jobs. So with that in mind, um, I've had a number of conversations. When I was on the Board of Finance in New Britain, we did five zero mill rate increase budgets in a row. We did that by making that a goal and then reverse engineering, um, changing our processes, our fees, and the way that we did business to make sure that we could deliver the same or better services um, and hold the line on taxes. So the way that we did that was that we, our budget document was extremely detailed. We had line item accounts for every single thing that we uh, collected money for or that we spent money on. And so the public could actually examine every nickel that was spent in a budget document. And they were very helpful to us in coming up with ideas for ways that we could save money without um, harming the delivery of services. So over the course of the last couple of weeks, I've had numerous conversations with friends of mine that are <clears throat> mayors, um, board of finance members and common council members. And I've looked at best practices. I've examined the document that we use and I've compared it to the budget documents that we used in New Britain and the documents that I just um, reviewed with a friend today for 90 minutes in Middlefield. And I think the results, um, I think there are some best practices that we could adopt. And I have those documents. I would like to provide them to you, to the board, um, so that you can take a look at those and right. see if there's any helpful information. So Scott, how would I go about doing that in this COVID world? Would I drop that off with Mr. Ward or? Yes, you can at the uh, town hall. Okay, so. so make sure he gets it to us. I will. I'll do that. Um, and just uh, again, to reiterate the point of why I think it's so important to to have a goal and then manage to that goal from the top down. Middlefield's mill rate um, in in 2012 was 32.15. All these years later, um, seven years seven years later, their mill, their mill rate is 32.29. So this can be done, it's being done, and I was on a team that did it for five years in the city of New Britain. But the budget document that we use right now is not granular enough to allow residents to be able to understand where the revenue comes from and where the money is spent. So, so I suggest that we stretch ourselves and try and improve the, um, the documents that we use to, to achieve that goal. Um, my second point is the state, the state recently, as you all know, passed the law on limited immunity for um, police officers. That, um, I don't know how much discussion there's been with maybe the town attorney and the finance director, but that puts us at risk for financial obligations um, because we have, to, we have to provide remuneration to the officers if there are any um, settlements or lawsuits that, that we would lose. So that's a financial consideration. They've had immunity in the past. Um, they don't have immunity now. So there's a risk there that we need to think about addressing. Um, and I've heard from people that I've had conversations with that there's confusion or there's uncertainty about whether or not state police are covered under that umbrella. So um, I think we should start to explore the risk level that we, um, that we have and think about getting an insurance policy to cover the risk if we need to. And also to start thinking about if state troopers have immunity, we might want some kind of a hybrid police system that includes resident state troopers as well as local officers because it may become more cost effective if state police still have immunity. Um, so that's an issue that I think we should put on the agenda and that we should explore. Um, and then I will also want to say as far as Egbotic goes, I really think that the East Street, um, the East Street, the Vaughn proposal and the Egbotic um, proposal, I think confusion reigned I don't think anybody on the board ever got to the point where we really understood the concrete offer. I think we were doing due diligence um, in the public eye when we should have been doing that behind the scenes. And we never got to the point where we really were able to evaluate 
um, a concrete offer that everybody had reached consensus on exactly what it was and what the finances looked like. So because of that, I think we should think about creating a task force and setting up a brand new process, whether that includes some business experts from the um, Chamber of Commerce or members of the community that have business expertise. I think we have to think about the way that we evaluate those opportunities. We should anticipate that more will come our way because Grand B is a great place to live. And we should be prepared to be able to engage with people that want to invest in our community. And I don't think we're prepared to do that. And the last thing I'll say is- Please, please summarize, Bill. This has been pretty long okay. conversation. Yep. The last thing is the, RF, the, um, the RFP process. I think our RFP process is broken because we've got a, a very desirable $2.6 million property and we only received one bid. I talked to three friends that are realtors and mentioned the opportunity and asked if that would be appealing to them if they were aware of it and they were all they all would have loved to participate and market the uh the property so i think that we're not reaching the right audience and we're not um you know to have one response i think we have to think about the channels that we're using to communicate our desire to market properties thanks right. for your time sorry to take up so much time thank you anyone else wish to address the board anna Anna Saluzzo, 15 Old Orchard Road. Um, I'd just like to second everything um, Bill Reagan said at the uh, top of this meeting. Um, very disappointed that um, you made a decision without referring it to public hearing and the residents. Um, I strongly feel, as do many people I know, that we were forced into this purchase in the beginning. It was a bundle <coughs> of and we didn't get a say in it. So this, this should have been evaluated more thoroughly. And from the comments that were made at the last meeting, um, I just felt that this was a foregone conclusion. And with the exception of Glenn, who actually reached out and did some research on his own, I felt that with everyone else, it was a <clears throat> conclusion and you've just been pushing it around the table for five months. And that is that is a very poor way to to treat uh, someone that's come along with an offer, whether you agree with it or not. So um, I would like to see going forward, um, Bill Gluck just mentioned getting a task force together. I would like to see some business people involved in evaluating these decisions so that we can treat offers appropriately and not just push them around the table <clears throat> once on end. It it's, looks very bad on the town. And um, yeah, very disappointed with the, way, with the way it was treated. So thank you. Anyone else wish to address the board? Yeah. Uh, uh, hello. Um, yeah, Bob Lindire, 367 North Granby Road. Um, just in response to Anna, she said it was, the purchase was pushed on the town, which is a true fallacy. I mean, that was put up to a public vote. The town voted to purchase that property. And as a future resource for expansion of the town, if it should need it, whether it be schools or parks or something else like that. So, you know, don't say that it was pushed on the town because it was not. And the town has not been, <clears throat> going out of its way trying to sell that property and these are just the two purchases that are requests that came in were just people out of the blue coming in and saying we'd like to do something and that's you know that, that's the town had no desire to do such a thing so i think you're a little off base i'm sorry that's my personal opinion and i think i would commend the town for trying to hold on to that property because that's what it was purchased for so that's all i have to say Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the board? Going once. Going twice. I will close public session and move on to approval of the meeting minutes for September 8th, 2020. Mr. Lackman, move we approve the minutes from the meeting of September 8th. Is there a second? Yes. Okay. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Thank you. 
Um, I just I emailed all of you and the town manager about this earlier today, so hopefully you've seen this already. <clears throat> Similar to my um, points at the last meeting about making sure that what's getting into the written meeting minutes is um, accurate. Um, I wanted to point out um, an issue with the um, the selectman reports portion of the minutes from last time. Um, specifically that um, I think there's some confusion around uh, the governor's executive order, the 24 hour rule about um, information being available um, on the website and other places uh, prior to meetings. If you read the executive order, it's pretty clear that that uh, applies to items that are on the meeting agenda, meaning that they would be discussed and or acted upon by the board as part of our exercising our, our powers and duties as a, as a board. The selection report um, is not that. It's not a, a meeting agenda. It's not a discussion. It's sharing of information. And so I think, um, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to pick nits uh, at the end of the last meeting. It was a long meeting. We did a, a lot of good work at the meeting. But uh, again, I'd just like to make the point that um, the casual reader reading the drummer six weeks from now who uh, may get the wrong impression. And, you know, if we need to get a statement from the town attorney or somebody to, to clarify uh, the appropriate use of the selectman reports and things like that, I, I would recommend that we do that. I know I'm breaking new ground uh, by, by doing this. Um, you know, if you look back at old Board of select Selectmen meeting minutes, I would say two thirds of them or more probably there is no Selectmen report at all. And when it is used, it's typically for more community or event oriented kind of updates. So I'm hoping that we'll figure out a way to make a better use of this part of the agenda going forward. Um, and that my colleagues on the board will uh, join me in making better use of that part of the agenda. But I don't want to give the community the wrong impression that um, we're doing something that's violating some sort of uh, executive order and not in the spirit of of transparency and uh, public uh, sharing information with the public. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. <laughs> aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. Let's move on to consideration. Uh, or there's no unfinished or table business. We'll move on to new business. Consideration of ordinance banning the feeding of bears. Um, I'd like to welcome Senator Kevin Whitkos here um, to help us kind of discuss and get some information about uh, what DEEP perhaps or the state is is doing on this. But first, let me turn to our town manager um, for any insight. John? Uh, thank you, Mr. First Selectman. Uh, what you have in your agenda packet is a draft or proposed ordinance. Um, by no means is it written in stone. But uh, it is similar to ones that have been adopted by our neighbors, specifically Heartland, Park Hampstead, Simsbury, and uh, Colebrook. Um, as the senator will um, certainly indicate, DEEP has been keeping track of the statistics and the bear population and the bear sightings have increased quite a bit over the last 10 years. Um, and as reflected in your packet, there are numerous Granby citizens and Heartland citizens that are concerned about the growing risk of the bears endangering people. There's also been an indication of increased motor vehicle contact between or with the bears. In 2020, so far, the Granby police have received over 30 calls regarding bears whether being sighted or in the road or in the trash, um, it has been a concern. Uh, also in your packet is a letter from Rick Orlock, the president of the Granby Land Trust. Um, they are uh, taking a position that an ordinance is uh, appropriate. And just speaking briefly to the draft ordinance, and again, I wanna emphasize this is essentially just a sample of what the community could do if the board so chose. 
Uh, it has a wider definition than just bears and includes wildlife, which could include bobcats, bears, coyotes, etc. It forbids the intentional feeding of wildlife, the feeding of birds between April 1st and November 30th, unless certain non-bear friendly seed is used in the improper storage of food. The ordinance would be enforced by the police department, the animal control officer, and any other designee by the town. Um, and this would affect the entire town. So um, I would defer at this point to Senator Whitcoast, uh, who certainly has quite a bit of information that would be helpful on this subject. Thank you, John. Thank you, Scott, and to all the other uh, board members. I've been dealing with this issue for a little bit of time now. Uh, in fact, I actually had a, a bill or working group this past legislative session to deal with um, wildlife management. And that was the, the name of the bill, an act concerning wildlife management. Because as uh, you both have said, you know, this year alone, as of September 10th, we had 42 sightings of bears uh, that have actually uh, entered people's homes more than sightings. They actually went into side into somebody's home um, in June, the month of June, we had 17 alone, which is all of what they had in 2019. The bear population doubles every seven years. Um, we're looking at over 800 bears. Uh, they can travel anywhere to 50 to hundred miles in a day. Uh, they maintain a close proximity to where, where they reside, where they can easily get food. Um, and so that was the impetus for me to uh, to do something in the legislature. <laughs> My working group had um, animal control officers, um, environmentalists, uh, representative of um, the legislature, and we tried to come up with something that could pass both chambers in a bipartisan manner. And I will say that you're or looking at your ordinance that you're going to be discussing later on this evening, it mirrors that of Simsbury's, and. It was very, very contentious uh, to put bird feeders uh, trying to control that. I will just give you the heads up right now. Uh, we did not include that in the draft language that we tried to do at the legislature. We made it specific to, to bears only. And uh, if you move forward with this ordinance when you have your public hearing, you're, you're gonna be um, bombarded, I think, uh, by including that, that you could find somebody for, for feeding birds uh, outside of the, the bird period. Also, some of the things uh, when you're expanding the scope, if you if you're really trying to go after bears, I would limit it to bears, because you're if you're opening up to just wildlife. Uh, some folks like to have uh, bat houses on their property to help control uh, mosquitoes. That could be looked at as prohibitive because it's uh, you, you're building a house with so it's an incentive or an attractive to a wild species to come onto that property. Um, deer, deers uh, are known to love arborvitae. Uh, so somebody can make a case that if you're planting arborvitae bushes, uh, then you're trying to attract a bear population. Um, you know, you get the neighbor versus neighbor war, and then they're making complaints, and they, they'll they take pictures of the deer eating the arborvitae. So what's the homeowner to do? Take that down. It's the unintentional feeding. But if it's a constant and if it's in your ordinance, you know, then you, you know, it's, you're going to get dragged down in paperwork and uh, appeals and um, wasting the police officer's time and whoever's going to enforce this through the investigation uh, path. So uh, what I did in, in Hartford was uh, specific to bears um, and it actually um, excluded garbage or refuse in bird seed because, you know, you put out a garbage can, if you put it out a day early and the bear goes and gets it at night, well, how can we put it out in the day when, you know, you know the garbage is going to take taken out. So did you, did you do that intentionally? Um, so while it's well-intentioned, I think you've got to be very clear on how you narrowly tailor it. Uh, I think the fine's a little excessive, to be honest with you. It doesn't say in here that, um, uh, that there's a warning in the provision that we did at the state capitol when we tried to pass legislation is, um, a monetary fine does not come into play until the person was given an official warning by the animal control officer or the person that had the authority to do that. Um, your, your ordinance, which is uh, mirrors that of Simsbury, goes right to the ability to um, issue a fine of $250 for each offense. And every day is a different offense if the property hasn't been cleaned up or the, uh, the feed hasn't been removed from that area. So um, 
we need to do something. Uh, Wednesday night, there's a, a hearing in Heartland. I will be up there as well, uh, trying to talk to those folks. Uh, deep, they don't have the manpower to come out and chase down every single uh, bear sighting. In fact, they categorize uh, bear responses in four different categories. Um, and it's only when they get to a category uh, three is when they'll actually come out and, and euthanasia is one of the abilities that they're able to do. And that's when it uh, has an interaction with the human. Um, but beyond that, uh, you know, they're just logging it. And uh, up in our neck of the woods in the Northwest corner in the central part of the state, uh, most people aren't even calling them anymore because uh, if you just counted up the number of bear pictures that you see on Facebook, you know, I'm sure it would, it would triple the amount of reports that they're receiving at deep. Um, the other thing that I thought was important that we came up with my working group um, and it would be for the town of Granby to consider is the purchase of a, a non-projectile uh, hazing pistol um, through research. And this came actually was a recommendation from the Simsbury Animal Control Officer who actually one day had to respond <coughs> to squadron line school for the elementary kids. And there was a mother bear with two cubs that would sat there for like six hours. So they had to have the police there in a private duty capacity uh, because the bears wouldn't move. He, he used beanbag rounds, hit the siren on the cruiser. Um, nothing would get the bears to move until they wanted to. Uh, he actually got training in this non-projectile hazing pistol. And that's the only thing that he's felt comfortable that actually moves the bears along and scares them away. So we had a provision in the bill that allows for training for that for, for um, <clears throat> municipal animal control officers. And the cost of that's about $250. So. Uh, that's maybe something worthwhile if your cops are, and your animal control are getting called to the scene. Again, it's non-lethal. Um, it just scares the bear, and it's been proven that that uh, works. But I'll be happy to answer any questions, Scott, you or the board or, or John have. Is it possible to kind of get a copy of that wording? Because I, I like that. I, I feel bad for the the bears and or the, uh, not the bears, but the birds and and all that and i personally i feel um like you said it's gonna pit neighbor versus neighbor um you know i didn't even think about putting the trash out a night early uh is that considered um intentionally feeding the bears so um any wording uh you could give us i think would be helpful sure yeah, what was that selectmen have questions? Uh, Scott, I have a question. Uh, Kevin, um, <clears throat> thanks for coming to our meeting tonight again. It's greatly appreciated. It's always good to see you. Um, you mentioned a hearing in uh, Heartland on Wednesday night. W what's the hearing about? Uh, they have a gentleman there who uh, is trying to run a business to attract uh, wildlife and use it as a tourism Thanks. It was intentionally feeding, building um, habitats for wild animals. Um, I, uh, the people are very upset about that in the in the town. They want to. Uh, they, I think they have an ordinance in Heartland that prohibits that. They're moving towards having to get a cease and desist order from the state uh, if the gentleman continues. Uh, so I'm going to go up there just to hear what their concerns are, especially if the state's going to get involved and you know see if deep wants to get involved. I don't know if uh, Maggie Winslow, she's the first selectman up there, if she's there in contact with the deep, but I want to just make sure I'm available, but I'm, I, that's what my understanding of the meeting is for. So so they have an ordinance in place, and I assume he's racking up daily fines, and, it, and that doesn't do any good. Correct. Okay. And I haven't seen Heartland's or, ordinance, so I, I, I'll review it before I go up there on Wednesday. Uh, I had a question. Yes, Mark, go ahead. Um, I'm pretty sure that the bears don't care which town they're in. Uh, what's the opportunity for getting something statewide or at least across a wider region so that uh, the enforcement would be uniform instead of a town by town basis, Kevin? Yeah, Mark, it's uh, difficult. I, again, you know, uh, the session was cut short because of COVID. Um, I had some difficulty trying to get the bill through, even though it's, it's non-lethal. Um, some legislators that are from not in our part of the state, they want to see the wildlife. They can't wait to see one in real life. They don't understand uh, the impact that it has uh, on people, uh, when, especially you've got an intruder that has no, no natural predator, so uh, except for man. That's the only natural known predator for bears is, is man. And so um, 
the population's increasing. They don't care because they, they'd like to see it down their neck of the woods. Uh, the fear was that if I brought the bill forward, I was trying, uh, that somebody would attach a bear hunt to it. And then they said, uh, the environmentalist said, no, we're not going to allow anything with bear hunting. And I said, well, the agreement has to be made that it's a feeding bill, if you will. It is a, um, well, also one other part, it, it, it creates a wildlife advisory committee. And on that committee is one animal control officer, one wildlife biologist, one forest ecologist, one veterinarian and one hunting and trapping expert. And then of course the deep commissioner and the legislators are on the environmental committee. And if, the, if all the data that they uh, obtain over the course of the year prescribe that something has to be done to manage the amount of the black bear population in our state, then they would make recommendations to the legislature. Uh, that's all it would, but people read into that saying, this is the, uh, the impetus to a bear hunt, which they're opposed to. So. I said, absolutely not. That only happens if you allow amendments to go through. But if we have an agreement that do not amend the bill, at least we should have science-based uh, data to determine what happens. So yeah, I, I, I agree that we need to have a statewide uh, policy. I, I don't believe in individual um, patchwork of <clears throat> ordinance across the state, but the state has an right now has the inability to do something. So it's left it really to the towns to step up to the plate to do something. <laughs> I applaud you guys for looking at it. Great. Any other member of the board? Sure, I do. One. Thanks, Scott. Um, Mr. Ricos, as part of your working group, were you privy to any research or studies or anything that could forecast or somehow look ahead and say, you know, if we all did everything perfectly, if we all secured our trash and we all put our bird feeders away and all that, that it would actually affect the, the <laughs> rate of the air pop? population or right i mean is there some hope or some um you know reason to think that we'll, we'll actually have an impact by doing something like this well i think though uh, we had some uh, experts uh that deal with that in that within that field and they felt that you know the more or the easier you make feeding then you're going to see that population so whatever you can do to prevent that or make it more difficult though the things are cyclical they'll find their own way um but you know i don't i guess the answer is uh we don't have an answer we don't have any science-based information yet these are folks that have just um like an ecologist or uh, a wildlife biologist that could be offering their recommendations but again you know mike Payne from Payne's inc he bought um uh, bear proof garbage cans, so-called, and I'm hearing now that they found a way to get into them, so they're opening up uh, the beer-proof cans as well. Anyone else? And Scott, Any if, I just, if I could just on one other point, uh, Bill had brought up something regarding the, um, the, the bill uh, regarding the police reform, and uh, yeah. state troopers are, are treated the same way as uh, municipal police departments in that there's no lesser uh, immunity or immunity standard that their face, it, it's all law enforcement. I just want to make sure to answer that question that came up earlier. Anyone else, which uh, yeah. question? Scott, Rick Orlick with the Grammy Land Trust. Is this an appropriate time to add a comment? Not, not really. It's for the selectmen. Okay. We've had uh, public comment, okay. which would have been appropriate. Um, any other selectmen have anything? Scott, um, I, I thought our intention was to invite uh, Mr. Whitcoast and then a representative from uh, DEEP tonight. Right. We couldn't get somebody from DEEP tonight. Can, um, we, can we get them at another meeting? John, can you answer that? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, I did speak with a biologist from DEEP today, <clears throat> and I asked if we had uh, subsequent meeting would he be available and he indicated yes so is it possible to perhaps if uh, senator Whitcoast can get us that wording um and we get a deep person we could or should we table this to till that meeting i or think that's a yes, good sir. idea the, the senator clearly has made some excellent points um i would like to look at uh, the language he proposed, modify the draft so far, 
include anything else the selectmen would like to see or not see. And then we could have a more thorough discussion uh, at the at the next meeting when this is on the agenda. Okay, is there a motion from anyone to the table? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Uh, if you guys need any assistance of uh, getting somebody from deep to your next meeting, just let me know and I'm more than happy to make a call. The deputy commissioner uh, has only been on the job a month. Uh, oh. So he's, he's making the rounds. He loves, he lives in Hartford. He was up in yeah. uh, Bar Campstead yesterday. I, I got a chance to meet him for the first time. He's a young, energetic guy, wants to get involved. So I'm sure he'd be readily available. If you let me know and I can work with John to help you get somebody here. Great. Thank you, Senator Whitcoast, for coming Thank you. this evening. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay. Let's see. Moving on. <clears throat> Get my glasses here. Uh, resignations. John, any resignations? No. Um, any appointments from anyone? None. Sally, for me. None for you. Sally, are no. you aware? Of no. Okay. <laughs> Okay, it shows that we have two vacancies on the Conservation Commission. Okay, so those interested, please see the appropriate uh, town committee chair. Um, moving on to item C, uh, department head report. John? Yeah. Oh. Um, it's my understanding, given the length of the agenda tonight, that uh, the suggestion was made that Mr. Severance would make his report at the next meeting. Perfect. All right. So let's move on to consideration of selectmen retreat workshop to set um, goals. John, you want to bring up your. <clears throat> Certainly. Um, thank you, Mr. First Selectman. There has been uh, off and on discussion at the last few selectmen meetings uh, about taking an opportunity to review the goals, set new goals, um, or other items of that nature. Um, I put this on for your consideration for discussion. I think uh, we can do this one of two ways. Uh, we can have a retreat slash workshop where the board can, well, frankly, work on anything they wish. It could be overall goals, could be budget goals, it could be um, working on um, how to function more as a team or how to agree on what goals to measure yourself by or to measure myself by. Uh, I have reached out to um, some outside contractors who were referred by other towns that have utilized them in the past. I don't have all the proposals in yet. I think in the past we've done this on our own. Uh, right. Depending on the price, I think it'd be worth considering having the assistance of an outside vendor. Then um, we can choose where to have it, I'd say as indicated in the memorandum, Oakham Farm would work as well as any other place. Um, it would be considered a public <laughs> meeting, so we would still have to have at least a, a virtual or digital component. Mm -hmm. it, it's wide open. Um, if the board chooses to do this, again, you can review your board uh, procedures, budget goals, agenda goals for the upcoming year, um, changes in response due to COVID, as one of the public speakers indicated, it's certainly in an ongoing issue. Um, so that is the background on this proposal. Um, if there's interest in it, I would recommend or bring this back to the next meeting with the proposals from the two out, outside vendors and you can decide if you want to do this strictly among ourselves or with the assistance of another um, entity. 
Okay. I'd so be happy to take any questions. We, yeah, we don't need to vote on it because you'll bring it once you get more information, correct? Yes, unless the well, overall I'll, I'll open it up you don't for, want to do anything. Yeah, I'll open it up for discussion in the selectmen. Wish you would, selectmen. This is similar to what we've done in the past, but we're talking about making it a little more spoofier. <laughs> uh, Mr. Selectman. Yes. Um, I think that it would be an excellent opportunity for us to get together. I know setting a, a budget goal for this year, I think is going to be something that requires more discussion than just uh, waiting for uh, the plus one budget and then uh, any guidance from the Board of Finance. Uh, there's been some big changes in how much we've been allocating for different activities this year. And I think we'd want to discuss where we want to set up next year's budget. And this workshop would be an ideal place to discuss that. Perfect. Thank you. Anyone else? No, yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, I agree with uh, Mark. I think, um, I think uh, talking about our, our budget goals are important. And, you know, from a personal view, I, I think, um, you know, I'm looking for another zero mill rate increase. Mm -hmm. And I really want to work towards that. I think that's almost a, a given is something that we should be doing um, much like last year and, and some of the years in the past. Um, right. And then I think we should also talk about some uh, agenda goals for uh, 2021. Perfect. Those, those would be my two choices. And I think, um, I think we could do those ourselves. I'm not sure we need an outside moderator helping us. Okay. Anyone else? Sure, I'll, I'll I'll jump on and say I, I wholeheartedly agree as well. It's timely, you know, with the, the budget process starting soon and uh, everything else that's that's going on. Uh, I'm encouraged that uh, that we have the opportunity to do this. The one thing I would add, on top of everything we've already discussed, would be the the to do items around the plan of conservation and development to the extent that there's work for us or any of our subcommittees or appointed committees to, uh, that should be shepherded along and making sure that we're making progress that that could be an important part of the agenda as well great thanks okay. anyone else I just um, I'm not I'm not sure where I stand on whether the outside party would 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 be good or not I, I realize there's always budgetary constraints but it might be good to have a third party um, running that process I think that might be a good thing <clears throat> I think price consideration is probably the biggest thing. I agree with Ed, we've done them in the past on our, on our own, um, and I thought they were pretty successful. So we'll, we'll see what the proposals show. I think it's important to at least get those. So, yes. all thank right, thank, thank you, John. Hey, Scott, the, the only thing I would add is that all these, all these meetings are always open to the public to attend. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And John said that, so. All right. John, anything else for that? <clears throat> no. <clears throat> okay. Moving on. <clears throat> God, I can't even talk. Uh, consideration of Freshies Cafe request to serve beer and liquor. John? Yes. Um, we were approached by the uh, operators of Freshies Cafe who are anticipating <clears throat> with the arrival of fall and fall weather that their outdoor business will certainly be curtailed. So to try and keep operations flowing, um, they're looking to increase revenue inside by serving uh, alcohol, beer and alcohol. Um, because the town owns this property, I thought this would be a proper thing to get the selectmen's input on. Um, this is not an atypical request. We easily have a dozen restaurants in town that serve beer and wine and or other alcohol. Uh, I checked with the chief of police. He has no objection to this. And this is not an official approval. They would have to go through the state process to get the liquor license but because we own the property if it's something the board was 
adamantly against, we would notify Freshies, no deal, and then they would not apply to the state for the liquor license. Uh, and I would point out, if you recall back in the early spring, we had uh, approved a three-month forbearance on the rent. <laughs> mm-hmm. As it turns out, Freshies only used one month of that, and they paid uh, the rent on the other two months. Great. Um, Good. So I don't have a reason to object to this. They would have to have all the proper insurance. They would have to have a certificate of insurance um, that would name the town as well uh, as a, an additional insured on their insurance policy. And I've already spoken to Kerma about that. So that would be part of the stipulation. They have to be fully insured and it would be approved by the state. Okay. So with that, I'll look for a motion to um, allow Freshies to move forward with the stipulations that John spoke of. So moved. Is there a second? Anyone? Well, we'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? Yes. I just one quick question that um, I'm not sure John covered. So, in the in the in his memo, it talks about uh, verifying the insurance policy is modified. Blah blah blah. Are, are we talking about Freshie's insurance policy or the town insurance policy? And really, the my question is: Is there any additional expense to the town? Um, it would be freshies that would have to have the insurance, uh, the additional insurance, and we would require them to name the town as an, an additional insured on their policy. All right. It would not be an additional cost to the town. All right. Thanks, John. You're welcome. Any? Go uh, ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, John, are, do other or other towns do they do this on their own town-owned property? Simsbury Farms. Oh, good point. Um, to be honest, I don't know. I did not solicit any other towns. But, but you're we, right. We allow it at Holcomb Farm, right? What's that? Yeah, yeah I'll just alcohol served at, at Holcomb Farm, sure. Right. Yeah, the, it, the caterers have to have the uh, insurance for it. And, and when you see the signs out that say, you know, public hearing, um, for, for a liquor permit. Is that the state that does that? Do, do we, yes. have, we don't have liquor to do control, care. right? Okay. Uh, I haven't, I, I did not investigate that and I have not been involved in that process before. I don't think it's a municipal process. I think it's solely a state process, but I'll check that. I wouldn't bet the farm on my answer at this point. Pretty sure it's state. State, yeah, sure. Liquor Commission has to give approval. <laughs> I've never done one in 15 years, so I don't think it's town. Yeah. But yeah. I'll check. <laughs> Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Ah. Aye. Opposed? Extension motion carries. Thank you. All right, item F, consideration of town manager status report. Um, John? Thank you, Mr. First Selectman. Again, in continuation with the theme that's been discussed on and off through several of the Board of Selectmen meetings, uh, there's been the thought process that we need to document any updates on current issues current projects or other items of interest to the Board of Selectmen. What I outlined in my memorandum is just the mechanisms or the tools we use now to update the Board of Selectmen. Uh, for example, in your packet this month, it comes in the second meeting of the month, you have a project update which covers <coughs> the ongoing capital projects in the town. Um, you also have the management notes from the department heads that come in at the second meeting of each month. Uh, you have uh, my report, which is comes out biweekly for, for every meeting that we have. Uh, in the past, uh, when there were specific issues um, that 
the selectmen wanted updated, I modified my town manager's report to put a recurring update for those items. Uh, I'd be glad to do that as well. Um, so if there's any issues the board wishes to be updated on, I can do that. All of these things go on the website as part of the Board of Selectmen packet, uh, including the, the capital project update. And certainly, if the board chooses other reporting mechanisms, I can put those on the website too. So again, this is an agenda item that was designed uh, to spur discussion. And I look to the board to give me guidance as to what, if any changes you want to the current reporting system. Okay. So John, um, we've asked this of the um, former town manager as well. Um, I think you do it uh, more than he did. Um, you, you know, you're providing us uh, your manager's report every meeting. Um, I, I like the idea of the, you know, a status report to give us kind of a check on where we stand other than, um, you know, having to read the um, minutes, but any uh, discussion from the board? Sure. What? I, I, I want to suggest maybe that we, this is one of the items we talk about at, at the, um, <laughs> at the, the retreat because uh, i think there probably is an opportunity here to um make sure that the information we're getting is aligned with um how we want to measure and monitor uh, our goals and progress going forward i imagine that this is not an insignificant amount of work that mr ward is putting into all this stuff and if we can find ways to lessen the the burden of that work and still get what we want and um, get it on the website and make it easy for residents to find and follow and all that kinds of uh, stuff as well, I think is, is important. So um, I'd, I'd like to see us talk about this in more detail and I'd like to see us talk about it again in conjunction with some of the other uh, discussion items uh, at the retreat. Great. Anyone else? Other discussion? Uh, Scott, if I could, yes, I Mark. think that uh, I appreciate all the information that John Ward puts up out for us at a regular basis into the uh, packet. And uh, I, I do realize that there are some times when there's an additional <coughs> question uh, that I might have that I would, uh, I find that John responds well to an email uh, and mm -hmm. brings up the information to answer my question. Uh, but in general, I think that he provides a, uh, a fair balance of information in his report and he is uh, available if there's additional <coughs> details that I've been seeking. Great. Ed or Sally, anything? Uh, I agree. I agree with Mark. I think that um, uh, we've been, there's been a good tra um, transfer of information from the town manager to us. Great. And it's, it's increased, yeah. Ed, anything? I have anything? nothing. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> thank you, John, um, for that. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so uh, let's see, moving forward, you'll continue with the updates you provide us. Um, this status report will just be more informative of uh, where we stand on outstanding issues. Is that correct? <clears throat> yes. And I encourage the board to give me whatever guidance they wish, and uh, we can as Selectman Ballard indicated, if the board wishes, if we do have the workshop retreat, mm -hmm. um, this can be one of the possible topics to um, maybe get a little more into the weeds on. But for the, for the uh, meantime, I'll continue as we've been doing so far. Okay, do we wanna put it on the topics or just address it now? What do we wanna do? No, I, I think, um, <clears throat> Talking about it at the um, at the retreat is a, is a is a reasonable idea, and I think um, because looking at uh, one of the lists that was generated, <coughs> my belief is a number of those items have been many items have been decided, and maybe right. not everybody's liking. 
um, but they have been decided. Um, so one of the things I would like to do is go through and, uh, you know, update that list to make sure it's truly, you know, what's outstanding or what we think is outstanding and, 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 and go from there. So I think talking about that at the retreat is a, is an appropriate thing to do. Okay. Great. Anyone else? No. Nope. All right. Thank you, John. <clears throat> Let's move on to consideration of approval of settlement of Johnson versus Town of Granby. <clears throat> John. Uh, thank you, Mr. First Selectman. A resident of Granby has made a claim that due to salt used to treat roads, um, her well uh, was uh, received an inordinate amount of sodium in it. Um, this house in particular abuts both the state road and the town road. Um, when I received notification of this, I turned it over to our insurance carrier, Kerma, who in turn turned it over to um, Chubb, who handles the pollution claims. Uh, the good news is we have coverage. The bad news is our deductible is $75,000. Um, so any settlement below that uh, comes from comes from us and not the insurance company. Uh, normally, I'd say the most logical approach to this would have been to come to an agreement with the state um, about handling this jointly and uh, the state was not agreeable to that to any degree. The problem with a claim such as this is we can easily spend more than the claim is worth in preparing a defense to the claim. Right. Uh, the cost of the engineering work to um, investigate this <clears throat> could exceed the cost of the damages I did ask the adjuster for Chubb to talk with the claimant and see if there was any potential for a resolution. Uh, there is. Uh, the number that would resolve this would be $30,000. Um, this would not be an admission of any fault. Um, it, it would be a settlement in lieu of proceeding forward with litigation. We're not aware of any other claims that are going to come forth as a result of this. And um, in essence, the majority of this claim is based on the damages that will be incurred by putting in a deeper well and replacing appliances that were damaged by the sodium content. Um, the damages were proven to the satisfaction of the adjuster whose job it is to evaluate the damages. Um, so Great. I think it, I recommend that the town resolve this. I think it's in the best interest of the town. I cannot in good faith tell you, I think we could get a better result. And I certainly don't think we could get a better result without spending much more money. Okay. Um, so All right. I, Thank you. I, I, let me, uh, let me get uh, somebody to read the proposed motion. I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the full and final settlement mm -hmm. of the claim Johnson versus Town of Granby in the amount of $30,000. Is there a second? Second the motion. Discussion. Mr. First Selectman, if I may. Yes. I just want to point out that if this is approved, the next item on your agenda is a request to uh, take this money out of the general fund. Right. Uh, we don't have a litigation account set aside, so it would be coming from the general fund. Okay. Um, do we have other suits coming from the general fund currently? Um, there is, I mean, is this going to another piece? Problem, the, the problem. We don't have any other pollution um, claims. Um, every other claim except one is covered by Kerma, the town insurance 
company. So I do not anticipate coming back um, for basically <clears throat> the payment of the whole claim. Okay. Um, so there's a motion a second. Any other discussion? Just, um, <clears throat> just one thing, uh, um, since John, you brought it up, um, I personally don't, um, I don't like us uh, going directly to the um, general fund. Um, I think that, you know, <clears throat> we should look in internally in th at the, uh, at the budget to see if it can be funded through the budget before we can go out to, before we go out to the general fund. I, I view it philosophically as, as the last place we should be going to get additional funds. I, I understand that approach and I don't have any objection to it, except quite honestly, I don't know any other account that I know is going to have enough money in it to fund this and any other account would have a different purpose listed for it. Um, and, and then frankly, I don't see this money being in contingency. I checked with the administration finance officer and uh, she concurred. It was her opinion to go to the general fund. But I agree with you. I don't like asking to go to the general fund. Um, but at the same time, I can ask um, to resolve this if I don't have the money right. um, to resolve it. And I failed to mention the town attorney prepared the release or reviewed the release, reviewed the whole resolution and is in concurrence with the recommendation to settle it. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyone else? Okay, all those in favor signify <clears throat> by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions, motion carries, thank you. Next item. I can get it here. Yeah, we pretty much already <laughs> is yeah consideration of the yeah. general fund appropriation for the settlement of Johnson v Town. John. Um, yes, um, as I indicated, this is a request for an appropriation to cover the settlement. Uh, if you approve this, <clears throat> I would go to the Board of Finance and seek their acquisition. Um, and again, I, I understand where Selectman Ohanessian is coming from, and I couldn't disagree with them. Um, I would say, based on the track record of the last few years, we have been successful at ultimately saving enough money from the expenditures <coughs> to return a healthy amount to the general fund. So, um, I basically view this as basically coming from what I anticipate will be a surplus at the end of the year, as opposed to draining down the savings at this point. But yes, I'm asking to take the money from the general fund. All right, I'll look for someone to read the proposed motion. Uh, sure. Um, I move that the Board of Selectmen <clears throat> authorize an additional appropriation of $30,000 from the general fund balance to fund the settlement of Johnson versus Town of Granby and forward this request to the Board of Finance to approve. Is there a second? Second the motion. Discussion. Is there, um, Go ahead. Just, uh, on my point earlier, not to be a stickler on this, but <clears throat> this is the second time that we've had discussions about going to the general fund out of budget scope. And I understand that this is, you know, it, it is kind of a little different. Um, and, and I believe the other one, if we get the, um, the, uh, the small town grant <coughs> exception also, but <clears throat> I, I just don't like, um, this concept and and one of the things is it possible to consider holding this off until we do um reclasses at the end of the year or do you think you have to have it right now you got to settle the lawsuit ed come on you gotta i'm saying it. settle it now but we have money to settle it john well i i don't have an account that has enough money in it right now to pay this 
Okay. And also All the right. accounts, um, the accounts are already designated as to what purpose the account is for. Um, and again, I understand where you're coming from. This is a little bit of the balancing act we go yeah. through with the budget I, every I year. I understand, John. Sure enough. Okay. Right. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Consideration of proposal to evaluate town departments. John. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Selectman Ballard has made a proposal. Uh, it is his suggestion that I agree with that the town departments uh, can be evaluated with the goal of trying to maximize efficiency and thereby reducing cost to a minimum. Um, and he has generously put forth a proposal. Um, and I want to publicly thank Mr. Ball or Selectman Ballard for the initiative and his desire uh, to assist in this. With all due respect, though, I would suggest that I do this on a more limited scale to start with, and I use an outside vendor. This has absolutely nothing to do with Mr. Ball or Selectman Ballard's credentials, which I have no objection to. I just think it's an inherent conflict to have a sitting Selectman um, also be essentially a consultant on the day-to-day -day operations of the departments. So what I would propose is I follow through on this and uh, get some estimates on evaluating some of the departments. The downside admittedly is it's going to make it a much tighter time frame to get an analysis done and a proposal that we could incorporate into the budget I don't think it's impossible, but certainly it's going to be more difficult than if we just start right now. Um, but um, I'm putting this out for the whole board to get your feedback on. Again, I want to thank Selectman Ballard and my response has nothing to do with his um, inability to perform this. I don't think that's the case at all. And again, I thank him for bringing uh, his interest to this before us for our attention. Any so questions or any comments? Questions. Oh. Yep. Any questions or comments for town manager? <clears throat> Anyone? Yeah. Uh, of course I do. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I get, you know, it, this is not the first time uh, this has come up and you know we had the IBAC committee to to look at a number of different cost savings measure, measures etc and if I understand the proposal um, it, you know it's a little more detailed and it's it's, it's counting you know Count. steps and widgets etc cetera, etc cetera, which uh, which I'm you know I'm not opposed to um, but I but I think before we do this in a myopic view of, you know, one or two departments in the town, I think we have to take a more holistic view of the whole town, which would include the Board of Education, because, you know, of our budget, you know, 70% of the total town's budget is Board of Education, only 25% of, you know, I mean, the 30% goes to Board of Selectmen, and of that, 25% of it is actually capital and debt service. So, you know, as we've talked in the past, and, and probably the biggest problem we have is, and, and you have this problem in, in corporations all the time, and I'm sure uh, Glenn can opine on that, is that you have silos. And, you know, each silo wants to protect their, their own turf. And that's that's very classic. And, and it's gone on for, for eons, and, it, and it's not gonna change anytime soon. But, you know, in the past, we've talked about such things as combining finance, IT, public works, et cetera, to look at potentially some big savings or improvements in service. And to me, I think we should be looking at that holistic view first and then get down into how are those departments, um, how are they defined, what are their duties, et cetera, 
and, and bring it. Then we can bring it down to a to a small level. level. And and I think that's a better way to do it. We have a forty seven million dollar budget, um, and you know I think we can find some cost savings as we talked about in the past. But I think we got to take a different approach. Um, and I think that to be realistic about this, if we want to budget something like this, and we're not going to get, you know. I'm not sure how fast we'll get back um, some RFPs, et cetera, but we might want to put a placeholder as much as, you know, two fifty dollars to $300,000 in the budget to get in a, you know, a top quality consulting firm to do that. <coughs> and that's something that, you know, we're going to have to see if it does fit into the budget, but I think that's probably more of a reasonable kind of quantum to think about. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just, um, Thank Ed for his comments and echo, yes, the, um, my advice back to Mr. Ward would have been not to only look at a couple of departments, but to, in fact, to look at everything because, as you say, silos exist and departments are somewhat arbitrary and a lot of times, especially when they're smaller departments, it's difficult to match exactly uh, workload with staffing and so there's almost always opportunities to move stuff around and, and level things out and all that. And essentially what I think Ed's saying is, there's an opportunity to move things around and possibly level things out with with the uh, the board of Ed education as well around some of the, the the business office kinds of functions and so i i could see that i could see that being essentially a you know sort of a sub step or a sub stream with within this kind of a project right that we we certainly should move ahead and make sure that the municipal departments are humming along as uh, municipal functions really or activities are humming along as as, as they should but it, uh, it, we in the in the areas that you mentioned essentially we already know that that an alternative uh, would be to to combine or move work with stuff that's on the ed side and 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 um to your point there's um there's potential opportunities there as well so i don't see those two things as i guess mutually exclusive or, or or against each other, right? They're they're complementary, and um, a natural outcome of whatever we uncovered as part of looking at municipal departments would be, you know, hey, can we can we partner, and can we, you know, we could we could slough off that kind of stuff to the IBEC committee if once they're back up and running and all that. So, you know, um, I, ideally, this is a continuous process that that never ends right not not only us in our oversight capacity but really mr ward and all of the department heads in their day-to-day -day management capacity that w one of the key drivers of of organizations that um, manage their costs successfully and strategically is that there's a culture and that there's and, and a discipline and a skill set and whatever that is instilled <clears throat> in and it just becomes part of part of um you know, doing your job and, and, and being part being in the organization. So um, there's 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 those kinds of reasons to to launch this sooner rather than later. It's interesting that Bill Glick uh, mentioned the um, getting down to a more granular granular level in the budget processes too. I my I essentially thought we were killing two birds with one stone here. Not not only by uncovering opportunities within the municipal departments to to do better, but also essentially to to um, improve our own budgeting process, right, and to and to be doing this kind of analysis and visioning and and fact finding early in the process, rather than sort of at the tail end the way we do it now. And so, the other thing we could consider doing is pursuing ourselves the sort of the the initial data gathering piece where you're relating activities to labor and non-labor expense lines, expense lines in the budget at, at the more granular level of detail like, like Bill was suggesting earlier. So in other words, we could that work needs to be done anyway. We can do that work as input to our budget process and maybe even to our goal setting process as a, as a board. Um, and then if you wanna hire you know, a, an independent uh, consultant or a, or a specialist in municipal operations or whatever to look at that data and tell us where they think there's opportunities. Again, these are these are related and complementary activities, not necessary. So we could break up the work in, in that kind of fashion. I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right. 
Anyone else? Uh, Scott, if I could. Yep. yep. Yeah, I'd like to uh, thank Selectman Ballard for bringing his personal experience onto the board, making these proposals. But uh, I'd have to agree with uh, Ed that if we're going to get enough bang back from our effort of uh, doing all this evaluation, I think we'd have to look at the whole budget to uh, justify the cost of bringing in a third party to do this evaluation down to the uh, level of detail that's uh, outlined <laughs> in Glenn's proposal. Okay. Sally, do you have anything before I speak? No, nothing from there. Um, just, just a couple things. Um, I think a lot of us have, uh, you know, either lived here, been involved with the town um, for a number of years. Um, you know, I, I think if, it, when we had IBAC in the past, um, it was like Ed said, to find efficiencies. We, we were realistic in knowing that um, we may not get savings initially, um, but we would get efficiencies. Um, if you remember at the beginning of uh, the year, we did talk or we did um, approve uh, reforming IBAC. Um, unfortunately, COVID kind of hit and that became uh, the priority. So I'd, I'd like to see us, um, and I'll send that email again out to Board of Ed, Board of Finance, uh, myself and Ed were on that committee. Um, so we'll hopefully start that back up now that we've kind of got a, I don't want to say a handle on COVID, but I think that's um, kind of the area um, we should move in. I. I you know, I, I, I guess I disagree with Selectman Ballard, and that's, that's you know, my prerogative, right? Um, we have one Selectman saying that we have some inefficiencies and we need to um, either hire a consultant or uh, whatever. Um, I, I tend to disagree. I think you know, if another goal of this is to improve our own budget process, that's what we were elected for. We should be improving our own budget process. If, if any members of the Board of Selectmen or, you know, outside public, like Mr. Glick uh, mentioned tonight, he had some great ideas. Um, I think those should be taken into account and we can further discuss that um, in uh, our uh, summit or, you know, retreat. I called it a summit, but a retreat. Um, so, I, you know, I'm, I'm not for hiring or spending money on somebody on, on the outside. I am a big proponent of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, there's always room for improvement. Uh, from this board, from any board, from town operations, but um, being as heavily involved in the town uh, operations as I am, um, going into town hall, uh, various departments, um, you know, I, I'm not seeing fluff anywhere. Um, not to say there isn't, but it's it's not obvious. So the results we would get. You know, I'm not sure, um, but I think IBAC, which takes into account Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance, Board of Ed, I think that's a more efficient way to go personally. Um, but again, we're a five member board. Um, we can discuss that in further detail if you agree um, at our retreat. Any other comments? Um, is there, do, how do we want to handle this? Move it to the retreat? Um, just let IBAC do it? What What do we want to do? I think the retreat offers a very good opportunity to, to talk about this further. Okay. I, you know, I agree with that. Sorry, go ahead, Ed. No, go ahead, Mark. Sorry. Um, go ahead, Mark. I, 
I was going to uh, second uh, Sally's proposal that sending to the treat uh, would be an opportunity for us to uh, discuss um, not only Glenn's proposal, but how we want to implement uh, improvements in our budget. And this would be an opportunity to work that in to our budgeting process. Okay, Ed? No, I, I think we have to, um, you know, I think bringing it to, re to the retreat for discussion where we could have more of a an elongated discussion about it is a good idea because I think we need to, you know, you know, there's two different concepts here, right? There's the the holistic, the top, top down versus going in at a, a very specific department. Um, and I want to make sure that if we do, we get the bang for our buck and, um, you know, I, I think we need to decide that, you know, because something as simple as having just one CFO for the town <clears throat> can save you $150,000, right? So there's some very, very simple things that can be done if they're doable. Um, <clears throat> so I think we need to think about those things um, because if we, you know, if we do it and we put it on our budget, you know, $250,000 on our budget is about 2% of our budget. And that's kind of, probably could be impalatable. Um, so we need to think about those things. Okay, anyone else? Uh, I'll just add real quick. Um, 250 to 300 is probably a little bit on the high side, Ed. Um, I, I've, so I, I've done I've done exercises like this for, you know, two to 300 FTE organizations over a span of four to six weeks. And so, um, and, and again, typically projects are done in phases, right? So the consultant wants to come in and, and, you know, they'll, they'll do the, they'll do the opportunity assessment and then they'll, you know, they'll charge a, the implementation based on the magnitude of the opportunities that, that they found or the savings they think they can generate something like that. Right. But so, so my, my point is though, it's, you know, it's, um, you know, it's one or two people for four to six weeks kind of a thing, which is probably more on the order of, you know, 50 or a hundred grand, not, not 250 to 300. Um, or, we, or, or, and we should, and we should manage that, or we should, we should expect that we should set it up that way. We should, um, we should expect the consultant to invest in the, the phase one legwork and find the opportunities and then make it up, make it up in a later, phase if they're actually able to help us implement and, and realize the savings, right? If we do all the analysis and none of the ideas are workable or um, nothing comes to fruition for for whatever reasons, then, you know, we've, we've tossed away all, all that money at the, at the front and then I don't think that's a smart thing to do. Anyone else? I don't know what you said. All right, so we'll, if everyone is, uh, Okay, with that, we will move it to uh, an agenda item on the retreat. Sound good? Yes. Okay, yes. great. All right, uh, consideration of donation to police department, Mr. Ward. Yes, um, a Granby citizen has donated $1,000 to Granby Police Department out of gratitude. Um, for the services rendered to her family by the uh, policeman. Um, and for this type of dollar amount, that would be appropriate for the Board of Selectmen to formally approve the adoption. Uh, I do apologize in that I don't have a specific use yet. Uh, the chief and I are still discussing it. Um, the intent is to certainly give something back that the officers would appreciate in light of the fact that it was their work that earned it. Um, also, I wanted you to be aware of this because I think it's a positive indication of how the police are doing their job and how they're received by the Granby public. Okay. Any, uh, or let, let's, uh, have someone read the proposed motion. Mr. Mm -hmm. Selectman. Yep. Uh, the Granby Board of Selectmen hereby approves the donation of $1,000. Second uh, it. Is there discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, 
extension for some carriers. Thank you. All right, town manager report, capital project activity update, Mr. Ward. Okay, um, you have in your packet the monthly update on the ongoing capital projects. Uh, I'll just briefly refer to the written report. Uh, the roundabout, as I'm sure you've all noticed, is um, proceeding rapidly through the construction. Um, you may have noticed some of the work taking place at the center, but the state is still working on the design and also uh, working on some of the plans for widening the road. Uh, in regards to bridges, the highlight is there was a public hearing last week on Moosehorn Bridge uh, that was put on by the DOT. They have finished designing uh, the um, work on the new bridge. Uh, it'll be unique in that it will require basically the road to be shut down for 56 hours. So that's gonna require quite a bit of pre-planning, including uh, the station stationing of first responder vehicles before the road is shut down. Um, but the state has been working with all the departments to ensure that, and the construction won't begin for another two years. Yes. Um, design is proceeding on Griffin and Hungary. Uh, <coughs> the state will be working on the design for Donahue and Simsbury shortly. Um, the high school projects are moving along. The middle school roof is almost done. Um, as you may recall, you approved the hiring of Drummy Roseanne Anderson, DRA, as the architect for the school projects. They are meeting <clears throat> with the school building committee. I believe it's this Wednesday at the high school um, to start brainstorming and go over um, the projects that are that they're going to design for. Um, in regards to my report, in addition to the written report, I just wanted to add uh, there will be flu clinics offered through the Farmington Valley Health Department. Um, one will be in Avon on September 30th from one to five o'clock and I'll need to post the location, it just occurred to me. Uh, the other one will be at Simsbury on October 7th. So I'll get the locations and I'll have that posted on the Facebook page and the website. Um, uh, in a, uh, also, the Long-Term Recovery Committee has completed a survey that they would like all the town residents to participate in. Um, and it's addressing what their needs are due to the COVID crisis. <laughs> and you'll be able to access that from the town website. Um, de -dum, de -dum, dum. Um, there is a slight uptick in the COVID rates in the Farmington Valley. Um, and as far as Granby's concerned, um, we've had 1,772 people tested, 40 of them have been deemed positive. It's a positivity rate of 2.3%. We have 35 cases per 10,000 residents and 15, roughly 1,600 people tested per uh, 10,000 residents. And to date, thankfully, we've had no deaths related to COVID. Um, so that's the addition to the written town manager's report. If there's no questions, I'll shift towards the uh, statement of budget accounts. Any questions? Budget operation. Any questions, um, John? Uh, Ed? Ed? Uh, Ed? Yeah, just um, it was in one of the other memos you mentioned that um, we only got one um, response to the RFP for Kearns. Is this now the place to talk about the Kearns and w what are we doing with it? Well, I, 
we can't discuss it at length because then it would become a de facto agenda item. Okay. I can tell you that um, the one proposal is being evaluated. I discussed okay. it with the community development director today. She's going to reach out and review it with the chairman of the development commission. If it looks positive, I anticipate coming before the board at the next meeting uh, to present it and to seek concurrence on awarding the contract or not. Um, so. Thanks. Any other sure. questions? Uh, yes, Scott, I did. Mark? Uh, I noticed that under your, uh, is it the department reports that the Registrar of Voters Office is, uh, uh, what is it, uh, procuring new equipment to support the uptick in absentee voter ballots? Would that be equipment yeah. that's available for refund under the, uh, uh, what is it, um, whatever the state funding is? Uh, There's a grant, um, safe polls grant, I believe, being issued by the Secretary, Secretary of State's office. Uh, it's not a lot of money, uh, and I forget the exact figure off the top of my head, but it may cover the equipment, um, but probably not much else. Uh, the other issue we were looking at is whether or not we need to hire any temporary help to uh, help count all the absentee ballots. Essentially, uh, we are expecting a large surge in the amount of absentee ballots. But I apologize, I don't have the cost of the equipment off the top of my head. I, I was just looking for the fact that we would be reimbursed for it. And I remember you had mentioned before that there was the FEMA grant for COVID related expenses and wondered if this was appropriate. Uh, I'll have to check with um, Mrs. Chang. I do know we discussed the FEMA reimbursement last week, and right now the overall prognosis is pessimistic. Uh, apparently FEMA is starting to issue policy guidelines, and they're taking a very hard line on reimbursements. Now, the good news is whatever FEMA indicates they're not going to reimburse, uh, we'll turn to the state and look for reimbursement from the state. I believe it's the CRF fund. Um, so my, my general thought with this is, it doesn't hurt for us to ask for reimbursement, but I can't tell you that I've received any guidance so about whether or not that's gonna be covered except through the Secretary of State's grant, and that's minimal. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Okay, John, budget operations. Budget operations, and again, we can still go at a fairly good rate because we're only looking at August. Um, the good news is despite uh, what we all know to be the economic strains on many of our citizens, the um, revenue collection was good. We're at 56% of what was budgeted um overall at 55 percent we don't have the auto supplement in because we don't send the bills out until december uh, essentially we've not received any of the state grant money yet either on the board of ed side or on the town side as far as town revenue um, the town clerk is off to a very strong start at the end of two months we've already collected 35 percent of what we anticipate for the rest of the year. Uh, the other revenue is on track. Expenditures um, between the encumbrance and what we've expensed to date, we're looking at, um, we're, being, we're in good shape and we're not in jeopardy in any account. Um, and we did make one service on the debt payment in August um, so we've paid approximately half of it for this year. So to summarize, uh, revenue is coming in above target. We haven't received revenue from the state yet, but that's typical. And town revenue looks good. Town expenses are all within expected range. 
Any questions on the budget? Nope. Anything else, John? No, that concludes my report. All right, moving on to first selectman report. Um, I do want to talk about um, a free drive-in movie at South Church, 242 Salmon Brook Street. This is uh, being offered by Granby Racial Reconciliation. Um, their website is GrambyRacialReconciliation.com. They are going to be showing the movie uh, this fr uh, no Friday, October 2nd at 6.30. The rain date is October 3rd. So Friday, October 2nd at 6.30. This is made possible through a grant from Granby Education Foundation. Um, they ask that people <clears throat> who are at higher risk um, from COVID and those living in those households with such individuals are recommended to stay home. Um, also, the day after the drive-in movie, they are going to host a facilitated conversation on race via Zoom at 12 p.m. for all those who have registered. Uh, this event, uh, as I said, is sponsored by Granby Racial Reconciliation uh, Group with support from a grant from Granby Education Foundations. Um, the email for this group is uh, info at GrambyRacialReconciliation.com. Again, it's a free drive-in movie. The movie is Hidden Figures. Um, some of you may have seen that. It's a great movie. Um, so it's this, or it's Friday, October 2nd at 6.30. Any questions and to register free on, uh, yeah, register free online go to GrambyRacialReconciliation.com. All right, and that's all I have. Any other <clears throat> selectmen have reports? I've got a couple things. Go ahead. Um, so I, I've been approached by a, a group of residents that are interested in exploring um, a uh, uh, having an ethics commission here in the town of Granby. And so I'm proud to announce uh, my support for their efforts, helping them get access to state and regional and other resources that they might need, talking to other towns that have done similar things, um, being the conduit back to our board. And, um, you know, when they get to the point that they've got a proposal or something to, to share, I'll submit it to everyone to, to put on the agenda. And I'm, and I'm looking forward to helping them in their endeavors. It's a, an important thing, I believe. So if, um, if you're out there listening, uh, watching, or reading in the drummer, and this is of interest to you, um, you can get a hold of me through the, the town website. Our emails are on the Board of Selectmen page there. And uh, so, sort of similarly, um, you know, the last thing on my short list of, of to-dos when I started my term was um, taking a look at the, at the town website and proposing uh, structural and uh, other improvements to the town website. And so um, it's, I'm going to be um, convening an informal group of folks to um, kick, kick around some ideas on that topic as well, hopefully in the, in the next month or so. Um, so again, if you're not on social media, uh, you know, if you're listening, watching, or, or reading in the drummer, if you have a background in user experience, web design, information architecture, or otherwise have uh, an interest or, or passion around um, improving the, uh, the the accessibility and the and the and the types of information that are found on the town website. You can reach out to me um, the same way. So thanks. Anyone else? Okay, moving on to I will look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstention. Good night and thank you.